Hey, it's Mike the Vegan here, reporting for Plant-Based News. Today we're going to look at an ongoing story, the story of milk in schools. We are going to look particularly at the astounding marriage between government and big dairy, how that actually works, and also some legislation that they are trying to push through, as well as a campaign against it all. All right. Let's start by looking at the facts because they certainly blew my mind. Looking to this report called Whitewashed by public health lawyer Michelle Simon, schools account for 7 to 8 percent of all milk consumption. If that percentage is proportional to sales, we are looking at in and around a billion dollars a year made off milk in schools. The dairy industry has no problem telling you how important this is to them. From a senior executive of dairy management to Trade Magazine in 2011, quote, That's a sizable and important piece of business. Those sales are crucial to lifelong dairy consumption and keeping people positively inclined to our products and our industry. AKA stardom young when they are a captive audience. They are legally obligated to go to school after all. So it's no surprise that the dairy industry is trying to milk that udder even harder from a dairy promotional organization. Quote, Schools and processors are realizing 58% of current potential. Potential is defined as milk with every meal. And once they've achieved that, well... Jimmy, yank that water fountain out. Boys, come on, milk fountain, closer this way, bring it in. Come on, we got work to do. Well, we will mainly be looking at the U.S. here, we have had large international organizations pushing the consumption of milk in schools for a while now. From Seed the Commons, quote, World School Milk Day was launched in 2000 by the United Nations FAO to raise awareness of school milk programs and to encourage schools and other institutions to do more to promote dairy. Seed the Commons and Mothers Against Dairy teamed up this year to protest World School Milk Day with their hashtag Get Milk Out campaign on September 30th. You can probably tell it's a play on that Got Milk campaign, but did you know that that campaign was funded by the Dairy Checkoff, which is a perfect example of the marriage between government and industry essentially acting as one. The Dairy Checkoff is a milk promotion program that is overseen by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They are funded by 15 cents for every 100 gallons of domestic milk or milk equivalent sold, and 7.5 on imports. This is a fund that totaled about $426 million in 2016. That's almost half a billion dollars. It takes that cash and does ridiculous things like this program, Fuel Up to Play 60. It is the largest in-school health and wellness program and was started by the National Dairy Council and the National Football League, or the NFL. So now you can start your children off with brain damage from slamming into each other and also diabetes from slamming down the chocolate milk. Neither of these organizations belong in public schools. Now back to whitewashed, it is, quote, Active in more than 73,000 schools, it enjoys 50 million annually from checkoff money, or 250 million over a five-year period. One of the program's, quote, success stories features a school in West Fargo, North Dakota, which put up posters promoting Dairy Week, distributed free Greek yogurt samples, and gave out yogurt bars for correct answers to their dairy trivia game. All right, kids, what's healthier, soy milk or cow's milk? Soy milk! Billy, that's the wrong answer. Guys, come over here. We're gonna waterboard him with soy milk. Still think soy milk's healthy, Billy? Yes, they were giving out yogurt, which means that this conversation is about more than just milk. It's about all dairy products, such as cheese, which is the main source of saturated fat in the U.S. diet. Which brings me to another checkoff-funded program, which is Domino's Smart Slice program, which bought pizza to 3,000 schools and 38 out of 50 states by 2014. Don't worry though, because according to this 2016 Domino's document, the carcinogenic processed meat they put on their pizza has less sodium than their normal carcinogens. Fuel up to colon cancer. 60. Now to some legislation that has been proposed to keep this type of behavior going. There is the School Milk Nutrition Act of 2017 from Ohio's Country Journal, quote, the School Milk Nutrition Act of 2017, introduced by Representative Thompson and Courtney, would allow schools to offer low-fat and fat-free milk, including flavored milk, with no more than 150 calories per 8-ounce serving, to participants in the federal school lunch and breakfast programs. Surprise! This is overwhelmingly supported by the industry, from the CEO of the National Milk Producers Federation, quote, when kids don't drink milk, it's extremely difficult for them to get sufficient amounts of three of the four major nutrients most lacking in children's diets, calcium, potassium, and vitamin D. 
Okay, well, a cup of whole milk only supplies about 7% of your daily value of potassium at about 320 milligrams. Interestingly, a cup of coconut water has almost twice that. As for vitamin D, well, they add supplementation during the pasteurization process due to inconsistent levels. This legislation is in part a response to a major 23 million gallon drop in school milk consumption a few years back. The dairy industry attributed the drop to those pesky structural changes such as food standards and increased fruit and vegetable priority. Horrible things. The fact remains though, it was a drop from 452 to 429 million gallons annually being consumed by children, 70% of which came in the form of flavored milks such as strawberry and chocolate milk. And sugar is also an issue here. With that 150 calorie limit, they could easily take a fat-free chocolate milk and then add 20 grams of sugar, which is about five teaspoons, which is over the three or four teaspoon daily limit for a child in elementary school. And that would be nothing new because one of the most popular school milks is True Moose Strawberry Milk, which has 21 grams of sugar. And the overarching fact here is that 11% of all sugar is put into dairy products. And I mean, I know I didn't want to drink plain milk. And from this Milk Processors Education Program report in 2010, quote, In 58 schools in which flavored milk options were removed or limited to only certain days of the week, milk consumption dropped an average of 35%. In fact, five of the schools saw consumption drop more than 50%. When flavored milk leaves, essential nutrients leave with it. So does the saturated fat and the mammalian hormones, which we will touch on in a second. But first, I want to look closer at chocolate milks and programs with chocolate milk by the Dairy Checkoff. We have chocolate milk has muscle through the Wisconsin dairy industry and also raise your hand for chocolate milk, the industry's effort to keep chocolate milk in schools. Just take a look. It's got milk, got chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, y'all, is drying up in school lunchrooms everywhere. The National Dairy Council is trying to save the day. Chocolate milk is, is getting kicked out of school. What's the deal? Absolutely. There's a lot of misinformation out there about chocolate milk in schools, when in fact, chocolate milk has the same great nutrient quality as white milk, only has an additional 60 calories, which most kids can handle right. if they get enough physical activity. And a quick note about hormones, because dairy does contain actual mammalian hormones. From this study, after drinking milk, they were able to demonstrate a statistically significant rise in estrone, a type of estrogen in both sexes, and about a 20% drop in testosterone in men. And this is very important because children are susceptible to exogenous hormones. This UK study that looked at 9,000 men found that drinking milk in adolescence gave men a 320% risk of developing prostate cancer. And from this study, quote, Several components of dairy products have been linked to early menarche, or first periods for girls, which is becoming a major problem in the U.S., Probably because they're getting that injection of mammalian estrogen 58% of the time they eat at schools. So milk was clearly not intended for human consumption, also evidenced by the 75% of the world that is lactose intolerant. The dairy industry's answer, lactose-free milk in schools. In conclusion, the dairy industry has its claws buried quite deep within the school system. They have their nefarious goal of surfing milk at every single meal. Meanwhile, children in schools are being exposed to 450 million gallons of milk worth of saturated fat and that added sugar and also those exogenous hormones. All the while, the dairy industry hides behind utterly false notions of nutrients that can easily be gotten from other foods or are added supplementally anyway. So at this point, what can you do if you want to stop this? Probably the single best thing to do is get involved in local politics, pressure your local school board, and just be a involved citizen. All right, that's it for this plant-based news expose. So what do you think? Is there any hope to get the dairy industry out of schools? Let us know down below if you have any other solutions for doing this. More creative, the better. Just go for it. Okay, feel free to subscribe to Plant Based News and also my channel, Mike the Vegan, and also share this video. Get the word out there, like it to get it more relevant, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. It's got milk, got chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, y'all, is drying up in school lunchrooms everywhere.